Power OLAP provides a tight integration with the Microsoft Excel environment. This is done by the introduction of multiple add-ins that were created for the Excel integration. When the Power OLAP designer is installed, two add-ins are inserted into Microsoft Excel. If you go to the Tools, Add-ins option, you can see that there are two add-ins, one called Power OLAP and one called Power OLAP Core. The Power OLAP add-in is an XLA file that can be found in the Power OLAP install directory. The Power OLAP Core is an XLL file, which is another form of Microsoft add-in that can be found in the Microsoft Windows System 32 directory. <clears throat> There are two options for Excel integration. Excel integration is available when installing the Power OLAP Designer. There's also a Power, Power OLAP Excel application called Power Excel. The difference between these two environments is that the Power Excel feature or application can be installed and used and run without the need for the designer. All interfaces and all work is done within Excel. Connections to a database are established and defined inside the Excel environment. Oftentimes, companies will want certain people to design and develop Excel reports. This is generally done with a user who has the Power OLAP Designer. Once these reports are designed, they can be saved and distributed to people who only have Power Excel on the machines. This does not mean that people in Power Excel cannot design and develop reports. However, the designer is very, can very easily be used to generate and create some standard reports within Power OLAP. Let's start out by looking at Power OLAP and seeing how this is done. In Power OLAP, I have a standard slice that has pages of actual versus budget, months on page, and regions and accounts on rows. Under the data menu, <clears throat> sorry, under the slice menu, there is a menu called worksheet sheet or F8. By selecting this menu item, Power OLAP will automatically launch or connect to Excel, creating a corresponding view in Excel based on the slice that's currently open in Power OLAP. As you can see, by looking into the Microsoft Excel worksheet, I have the same format here as I do here in Power OLAP. Also, you can notice that the numbers are similar between the two environments. If I recalc in Power OLAP, I can see that the numbers are exactly the same. How does Power OLAP do this? Power OLAP and the add-ins in Power OLAP introduce several new functions inside of the Excel environment. Let's take a quick look at some of these functions and we'll look at some of the more critical functions uh, in more depth, both in this uh, description as well as future descriptions. We'll click on a cell and we'll go to the Insert Function menu. <clears throat> Part of what Power OLAP add-ins did was created a new set or a new category of functions inside of Excel called Power OLAP. I'll select the Power OLAP functions. As you can see, there are many functions that Power OLAP implemented inside of your Excel environment. Let's look back at our sheet now that we created from Power OLAP. Let's click on cell B1. You'll notice that B1 is actually a function created by the Power OLAP designer and inserted into the Excel worksheet. In this instance, the function is called OLAP database. There's also an OLAP open function, which, similarly, which works similar to OLAP database. However, OLAP database allows you to have multiple database connections from Excel whereas the OLAP open only allows you to have one database open at a time from Excel. As you can see, this parameter or this function is telling Power OLAP to open up a database on the server named this with the database name of this. You can also use OLAP database to open up local databases. Let's take a quick look at the parameters to OLAP database. By clicking on cell B1 and hitting the function key, I bring up the Power OLAP or the Microsoft Excel wizard with the Power OLAP formula within it. This function is telling me that this is the name of my server, this is the database, this is the name of the file, and this is the version or the protocol I want to use to connect. 
as I click into these cells, a description down below tells me what each parameter is for and how it's used. Once again, the name of the server, the name of the database. If you want to open a local database file, you can actually specify the name of the OLP file in the file parameter. The version specifies whether we're trying to connect to a server via HTTP or TCP IP. By default, a value of TCP IP will be used. Let's look at some other functions. In cell C3, we have what's called an OLAP member function. This OLAP member function is simply returning a value from the power OLAP dimension, actual versus budget, for the first member of that dimension, which happens to be actual. What this allows us to do is to dynamically access information from our power OLAP cube to create our slice and to manage the data that's appearing in our slice. Much like the actual versus budget lookup, months is the same, however, it's looking in the months dimension. All standard OLAP functions, except for the open database or the OLAP open function, require the database name as the first parameter. In this instance, you can notice that all of these functions are referencing cell B1. Cell B1 has the return value of the OLAP database function located in its result value. Let's look at some of the other features that Power OLAP or the Power Excel add-in provide. One of the nice features is here, the OLAP member function supports a double-click functionality. By double-clicking on that cell that contains OLAP member, the Power OLAP Excel add-in automatically brings up a dialog, allowing the user to modify the value in that cell. So for instance, if I go to the member list, as we noted before, you can see here, we currently have member one selected for this option. If I select April and I hit OK, the new cell is populated with the April value. The dialog automatically changed the index from one to four. Why is this important and how does it work when calculating data within a sheet? In this particular example we have, I've used a feature called OLAP table. OLAP table is responsible for populating the data in this grid. For a further explanation of OLAP table, see a different, uh, uh, a different uh, process. If I click on OLAP table and select the elements that make up the OLAP table, I can see here that the month, the reference in the OLAP table, is referencing the cell C4 and cell C3 values. By doing this and using these values, I'm telling OLAP table to, to display the data at the intersection selected. So in other words, I'm telling it for B1, the database using PO, for the cube, future year model, for the intersection of the points actual and April, for the values along the regions dimension of world, North America, Canada, etc., and for sales, unit price, and price, I'm telling it to display the intersection of that value in a, in a grid starting at the intersection of cell B9. Having changed April, I'm going to recalculate Excel, and you can see that the values are automatically changing. One thing that's very important to remember about this, the data that's being displayed in this cell, even though it's saved inside of the Excel worksheet as a value, is automatically recalculated and replaced when recalculating the sheet by the OLAP table function. So in this example, if I change April to May and I recalculate the sheet, I have in essence a new report. The values that are in this sheet are dynamically calculated and retrieved from the Power OLAP cube. Changes by other users or by a user in the designer to this cube, I'll change that to 400, I'll come back in, I'll change this back to January. And then when I recalculate, the changes that I made in Power OLAP automatically take place or can be seen in the Excel worksheet. Likewise, I can also come into my Excel worksheet and change points here. These values are actually written back to the Power OLAP cube from Excel. As we can see, the value here changed based on my number changing. If I go back to my slice and recalculate it, I can also see that those changes are, uh, the changes that I made in Excel are reflected back in the slice here. 
the value that I changed to 200 appears back in the slice as well. What this does is it takes the data from being dead and stagnant inside of Excel worksheets and it saves the data in a master database, a single repository for all reporting purposes.